Hello, welcome to the Light Shine Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Trisha Carr, and I'm here with the beautiful Crystal Ann Compton. And we have a really awesome, I think a very utilizable and also very mind expanding episode for you today. We're going to talk about how to use symbols, sigils, and talisman in your spiritual work for manifestation and for just really a variety of of, um, things in your life and in your personal and spiritual development. And Crystal, you have a lot of interesting experience using symbols. You've taught about it in many of our programs and you just have such a, like you're so creative with it and spirit really, you're pretty, I think you're self-taught at least in a lot of ways, or at least spirit taught you, gave you all of these wonderful ways to work with symbols. So I don't know, how did you start to work with them or how, what are some of the ways that you find symbols to be a benefit in the, in the life? Well, symbols connect us to something. They connect us to an idea, they connect us to an entity, and they symbolize kind of a larger or a more expansive concept or reality. Now, a few months ago, we actually talked a little bit about the sixth dimension. And when we talked about 60, I explained that that dimension in particular is the dimension of symbols. And in specific, it's the dimension of sacred symbols or sacred geometry. Anything that is physicalized, or manifested in 3D reality, which is our reality, must first be created in the energetics. And in specific, it must be created in a symbol form. Once it's created in the energy in this pattern, then we can start to draw down and manifest or physicalize that creation in this particular reality. So symbols connect us to different things. And when you think about it, like you think about a a corporate logo, maybe something like the, the NBC Peacock, Just seeing the peacock connects you to the broader concept of this particular network and maybe allows you to draw in the energy of that network or the programming on that network so you have an understanding. Just that little symbol is kind of a doorway into another experience. And that's what symbols kind of do. And that's how I I tend to use them. Well, to be specific, I use symbols to either act as a shortcut in a process that I might be using or to act as an anchoring or a benchmark in something that I'm doing. And I also use symbols to activate or to manifest specific principles of energy in my life. Now, with regard to activating, what I mean specifically is I will use a symbol and this is a symbol that I can create on my, by myself, like through a sigil, or I can imagine a symbol Or it can be a symbol that spirit gives to me. Maybe I'm having an interaction with the world of spirit and they are inspiring me to do a certain kind of work. Maybe, for example, write a book. And that's a huge project. There's a lot of information connected with that. But we start before we get into any of it with a symbol. And maybe they offer that symbol to me and I accept it. And then that symbol represents the work. And anytime I want to get into the energy of that work, or connect to the guides of that work, I activate or I turn on that symbol and boom, I walk through that doorway into that experience. So there's so much to talk about with symbols. I mean, we we wanna talk about how to activate a symbol. We probably wanna talk about uh, the ways that you can use the symbols, Um, but why don't don't you share Mm -hmm. some of the ways that you, you work with your symbols? Yes, and so, you know, the creating of the symbol or receiving them, this is, um, this is your, your imaginal senses. So when you are receiving a symbol from a guide, it's one that shows up in your mind. It's clairvoyance or just a knowing, you know what I mean? So it, it doesn't require, you could, I mean, honestly, I'm a very clairsentient, so I can feel a symbol, you know, <laughs> I can define it by the feeling sense. But, you know, just for short, we'll say the imaginal senses. Now you can do this just in the mind's eye or you can draw it and you can allow almost like automatic writing. If you want to cooperate with spirit, you can allow the the hand to be directed by spirit and there's your symbol. And so, yeah, again, there's just so many ways to do it, but it is akin to, you know, as a hypnotherapist, hypnotherapists use things like keywords and, and, you know, different 
different different techniques that induce someone, but the keyword is is like that function of a symbol. It um, when when you first start to work with a hypnotherapist, the first first session, it might take a little longer, a little progressive relaxation takes a while, and then as the relationship and rapport progresses, then the hypnotherapist can defines a key phrase or some key words that just bypasses Mm -hmm. a lot of that and kind of takes you deeper into the energy by just doing that. And if you listen to Dolores Cannon's books, or sorry, I always listen to books. If you read Dolores Cannon's books, because she's a hypnotherapist, she talks about, I used his key phrase to take him to, you know, to this place where the elevator was. So it's all like, it's all interrelated. And we also, in in hypnotherapy, we use anchors, as you already mentioned, Mm -hmm to be able to put a symbol on something so that it is every time it's thought of and you can do the conscious thinking, you can be about in your day and you can just call to mind that triangle inside a circle with a starburst inside. And then that will bring you into the the state of whatever that principle of activation, manifestation, well-being, and it will tell your body to tell your, I mean, it'll tell your mind to tell your body to run that energy. So it can actually be used for physical healing, you know? Yes. So yeah, it's, um, I remember one of the times that I used, well, I was, I was in meditation. You and I were about to start a program. It was last year. I don't remember which one it was. Maybe it was the energy intensive, which is appropriate because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's also, we use it in energy healing, what, you know, giving symbols to a client, putting it in their field. And um, yeah, I just was in meditation and prayer about our program. And I don't remember exactly what it was. I remember there was a triangle involved in the symbol. And then there was like a sort of ritual that was given with it, like do this for three days for uh, 33, something along those lines. But it was very bright and brilliant. And there's also colors involved. And if you're working with the symbol long-term, you can activate different colors through that symbol. You know what I mean? Like to activate different rays, activate different uh, frequencies running through that same principle. There's so much to cover, like <laughs> you said. Is, there is. <laughs> there is. I, I kind of want to simplify it a little bit. Like yeah. and give an example of a great time to use a symbol. So, And, and I use symbols a lot in my meditation. So mm-hmm. when I am entering into my meditation, and, and you know, there's different kinds of meditation. There's meditation where you're just being in the energy and the frequency of communion with source or with I am. You're not doing something. You're not necessarily trying to manifest something. But sometimes I'll enter into a meditation and what I want to work on, although work is not the right word, but what I want to focus on and intend for is communion with my body and loving myself and really connecting with my physical incarnation. Why am I here? And feeling that high vibration about my life, you know, getting centered in that beautiful aspect of myself because I don't, I don't do that enough, you know? And so I'll enter into a meditation and I'll do this in, in collaboration with spirit and I'll get into the essence of who I am and I'll come into it with such love for myself and for this life. And there's a moment, like a peak moment in that meditation when I really feel that, oh, I'm just loving myself. And I'm really compassionate about my physical body, about my wellness. I'm also calling in the highest vision for my physicality. There's like this peak experience moment within that meditation where I'm there. Ah, I've got it. I've hooked into it. And when I do, I say, okay, let's put a symbol on this. Like, let's let's find a symbol. Spirit, please give me a symbol. Or maybe I'll imagine and create a symbol myself. And I'll create that symbol and I will place it on the feeling and the frequency of that. And I'll spend some time with the symbol and in the meditation right there. Feeling that love for myself and that goodness for myself and also just activating that symbol. Now, for me, to activate a symbol, I send my intention and my consciousness into the symbol itself. And so maybe hypothetically, my feeling of wellness and love and compassion for myself looks like a rose, looks like a beautiful red rose. Maybe that's the symbol of that for me. And so I'll create the rose and the feeling of that, and then I will send my consciousness and really my essence and energy into the symbol of that rose until I know that it's activated or that it's been turned on, if you will. And once it's activated... Well, actually, let me first explain. That feels and looks differently to me. (laughs) Sometimes when a symbol is activated, 
for me. It actually takes on a different color or a hue. Sometimes there's a vibration to it or um, a kind of frequency. And sometimes, because I'm clairaudient, I'll actually hear like this powering up kind of electrical sound, which tells me, okay, the symbol has been activated and connected to this experience or connected to this intention. So once I have it activated, I know that I have it useful. I know that I have it connected to me. And so one week later, or two weeks later, when perhaps I've fallen back into the way that life moves, and I'm, maybe I've put on a couple of COVID pounds, or maybe I'm not <laughs> feeling so great in my physical body that day, I can take a moment, or I can take a beat, and I can clear my mind, and I can imagine or envision that red rose. And I can connect to it, and I can send my consciousness and my energy into it. I can activate it. And in doing so, I draw into myself the frequency of that wellness that I experienced in that meditation two weeks previously. It allows me to kind of time travel back into the feeling of that. And so then I can go out through, I can proceed throughout my day at that point, feeling a lot better about myself. That's just one simple way to use a symbol to connect you to a feeling or connect you to an energy, but you can slap a symbol on anything. Like I have slapped a symbol (laughs) on this relationship that I have with you because of course we have so many things that we do together. We are friends, we laugh together, we kiki, but we also create Mm -hmm. together Mm -hmm. and we build and we also have students and we guide them. And so there's our our symbol, our, our experience is intricate. And so I've connected a symbol to the health and the wellness of this relationship so that we're always oriented in that love for one another and we're always excited in creating this business that we have together. And if I ever feel like a wobble in the relationship, because that happens, we're humans, Mm -hmm. I go back to my symbol, I activate it. Or maybe I will activate it with a specific color. For me, green is love, Mm -hmm. you know, or or Mm -hmm. pink can be healing or whatever the color is, but... I'll activate it and I'll strengthen that connection that we have with each other. That's just a couple of different examples of, of what you can do with a symbol. And and it really does work. It really works. It really does. It's very, that's so sweet. I love our yeah, symbol. Yeah, do. We have yeah. a symbol. You know, it's um, one of the ways that it can be used very directly, the use of symbols, is to unravel limiting beliefs. Because you know what a belief is, particularly a limiting belief, well, all beliefs, they are really just symbols. They're they're thought forms, they're energy packages that Mm -hmm. we have created in order to make our thinking and feeling and doing in the world efficient. So we don't have to rethink this process. This is just exactly the same thing. Symbols. So we put a we put a belief there, a package of energy that says, when this is felt or experienced, rush to this thought about it, rush to this reaction to it. Now, limiting beliefs mean that they are old or just simply were never there to service in the first place. They could be outdated. That's why they're now limiting. And so if we actually identify a limiting belief, let's say I'm unworthy or life is hard and I have to struggle to make money. If we have that belief, well, we can create a symbol that aligns with its opposite or it's the truth about that, what that is, limiting belief is trying to help us to, what our energy is trying to help us to actually understand. The contrast of that limiting belief is that I am connected to infinite abundance. If that's what, you know, so then if we can get in that feeling and thinking state, let all of that good vibration, that good feeling you know, to where, and, and by the way, sometimes when we have a limiting belief, maybe it's I am connected to infinite abundance always flowing to me. If you can't quite feel that yet, that affirmative state about it, then say, I am, I am open to, it is possible for me to connect with more abundance, wherever we start, whatever is a positive. So then you feel it, you charge it up with the feeling, let a symbol come to you or just choose a symbol because spirit is working with you no matter what. Sometimes it's more empowering. They don't give you the symbol because you're meant to step up in the process. That's what's actually more empowering. So just a slight side note, if you say, well, I was meditating and my guides didn't give me any symbol because you were being called to choose one. And that's the empowered state that was better for you at that time. Slap a symbol on that new belief 
the new thought form that you are bringing in, and it will directly counteract the limiting belief. Now, it takes, it's a process because the brain, the body, and the energy needs to be retrained. This is mind reprogramming, but it is the it is it is a direct correlation because it's how that limiting belief was created in the first place. But now we've put something more really dynamic and very intentional to be able to neutralize it and then move into the forward direction, which is again what we are intending to in our soul to learn and to grow through to release that limiting belief. Pretty cool. Yes, very cool. And so there are internal symbols and then there are external symbols. And what I mean is when you create a symbol to represent something that you are trying to bring into the life or trying to fortify something in the life, you may create that in your imagination. Mm -hmm. Or, well, actually, that you should do that always. <laughs> create yeah. that in your imagination and have a mind picture of what that symbol is. Work with that symbol internally to activate it, to turn it on, to connect it and all the things but in order to amplify the nature of the energy of that symbol, it's good to then externalize it. So if, you know, my connection with Metatron is uh, symbolized through Metatron's cube, which is a sacred geometrical pattern. And every time I work with, every time I call him on the phone, if you will, all I do mm -hmm. is activate my Metatron's cube in my mind's eye. Um, what I can also do, though, is externalize the Metatron's cube, which I actually I have a cube right there, and I can actually place that symbol in my physical reality. Maybe I'll draw it, and when I'm drawing it, I'm actually very meditative and contemplative, and I'm connecting intentionally with Metatron as I draw this beautiful symbol. It's, it's almost, um, it's, it's a way to externalize the intention and amplify and accelerate that connection and communion. I can place what I draw or what I paint in different spaces in my meditative room or wherever it is that I do work with uh, Metatron. I can also buy something like a medallion because you can get different symbols that you can use and you can actually wear a medallion for Metatron that symbolizes your connection and the work that you do with Metatron. And the more you touch it, the more you actually imbue it with your own essence and your own frequency, the more you connect uh, deeply with Metatron. This then goes from being just a symbol, not that that's, you know, it's, a symbol is so powerful, but it becomes also a kind of talisman, something that you wear, something that you keep with you that keeps the pattern of energy that it represents close to you as well. This is why people will wear the medallion of Saint Michael or Archangel Michael because Archangel Michael symbolizes protection, right? That beautiful, yeah. the beautiful energy of always feeling fortified and flanked at all sides by your angelic emissaries. Well, by touching that medallion or that symbol, that externalized symbol of Michael, you connect more deeply to it and you amplify the principle of that in your environment. And I will tell you, as a clairvoyant and as somebody who works with talisman and externalized symbols, I can actually see it represented as a grid around somebody or around myself. And if I'm wearing something, for example, Archangel Michael's medallion, and I'm touching it, and my intention is that I am always protected, the angels are always with me, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and I'm rubbing that medallion, and I'm connecting my essence to it, I can actually see almost like this holographic, royal blue, purpley kind of grid that is all around me. And I believe that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm amplifying that. I'm fortifying that. I'm creating that with Michael around me. And so I am protected and no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. So it's this beautiful kind of way to work with a symbol that really, really does work in the life. Mm-hmm. So beautiful. And, you know, some people may be wondering, well, where do, you know, do crystals serve in this way? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So as Crystal was talking about the talisman that may have Metatron's cube on it, well, you can also take that, the symbol that you have in the mind, and you've charged it up in the way and activated it, as Crystal has described, then you can assign a talisman to it in the form of a crystal. And the crystal itself will amplify that energy. And so, you know, it's that's a, that's a way that you can use crystals in your symbology work as and then, you know, have a physical talisman to help you with that. And talismans are really fun. And by the way, you know, we're, a talisman is 
it's a it's a tr- it's a trinket it's something physical that you use that you send a signal to you send an intention to and you know that then then you know some people have a stone they carry in their pocket rosary beads would be like a talisman that will then take magical qualities take your intentions and your energies and help you to activate them but they themselves because of the elements of which they are composed are partnering with you and amplifying it so just taking the the symbol work and connecting it with talisman is like, you know what I mean? Like exponentiating. <laughs> That's pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. No, they mm-hmm. act as little beacons. So yes. I've, I've imbued this medallion with protection and now it's actually projecting out almost like a hologram of protection all around me. So it takes it in and then it expresses it. So you're even more fortified in the energy that you're calling in. Now, another way to create a symbol is through a mind picture. I call these mind Polaroids. For example, if you want to call in the energy of success, like personal success into the life, you can actually take some time, maybe go into a meditation and go back through the timeline of your life and find a moment, an experience where you felt so successful, like everything was going your way. Maybe you got that job or you achieved that thing and you really felt in your physical body, the energy, the frequency of success. And as you're going back in the timeline and you're going back into that one experience, you find that one moment within the experience that was really resonating with success. And then you click, take a mind picture. And you take a picture of what you looked like in that moment. And were you smiling in that moment? And where were you? Were you indoors? Were you outdoors? Who was around you? What was going on? You take a very descriptive picture of that moment in time when you really, really felt that success. And then you activate it. You send your energy and your consciousness and your essence into the Polaroid, the mind Polaroid of success. And you turn it on and you amplify that energy in the present moment. You really, in effect, you call that into the now and you take it with you into the future. That's a, another, and we all have memories, right? Mm-hmm. We can all hearken back to things that have happened in our life when we felt accepted or we felt really loved or we felt really beautiful or we felt really creative. Going back and taking a picture of that and activating it brings that back into the now moment. And so we can all use symbols in this way. I don't know if you even know this, but you are touching upon a neuro-linguistic programming uh, technique, I guess you would call it. So I'm an NLP certified practitioner, and you're talking about it in this sort of affirmative moving forward way. But one thing that an NLP therapist will, will guide a person in, so anyone can do this on their own, and actually, it of course, you can do it on your own, but a practitioner might guide you to, let's say you have there's something that you want to reduce. So you take a mind picture. So maybe it's, you know, that uh, argument I had with my ex that just makes me so mad about everything he's doing. Okay, bring that up. Okay, now freeze it. And you take that in mind picture, as you said. Okay, now um, shrink it down, make it smaller. Now expand it really, really big. Okay, now let it come to some other, now drain the color out of it. Okay, now add it, make it sepia, make it, a, make it all brown. Okay, drain the color out of it again, make it really, really small and crumple it up. Okay, now crumple it up and then throw it away. Send it to the light. That's something, and even just doing that, even though it seems like you're not really emotionally connected to it, you get emotionally connected to it first, like activating the symbol, and then you show your mind how you are masterful over it. So it's kind of a different way. It's really using symbols though, isn't it? It's yes, the it same is. thing. Oh, isn't wow. that cool? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> There's, I know. Isn't, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. I thought you might like that, actually. I've never told you about that. That'd be something that you might like to use yourself. Well, something that we also wanted to, another kind of symbol that you can use is a sigil. You know, I got to say that there are different, there are all kinds of different sigils. And sigil can be something that utilizes letters or can use other symbols. But I'm going to talk to about a very simple way to use sigils because I'm I'm very simple. I'm a simple gal (laughs) from Texas. (laughs) (laughs) I'm actually more from California than Texas now. But a sigil is is a very it can, it's for some people it is so powerful to reprogram the mind. So I'm going to teach just a I'm going to talk about just a very simple way to create sigils and what you would do is like what we're talking about identify a positive belief or something that you're manifesting 
and come up with a phrase or a way to express it. So we'll take my, you know, um, abundance one and let's say I am creating abundance. So just something simple like that. So maybe that's your phrase or maybe it's something else, but then you go, I am a creating, a, I am creating abundance. Now, then what you do is you kind of remove the vowels or you take the first letters of the words, just whatever kind of calls that to mind. So probably you want to keep the I, even though that is a, um, you know, a vowel, but it's the first letter. Then for the second word, I would keep the M because that already is I'm, you know what I mean? That's a conjunction. Um, And then creating abundance. I like both of those. So we'll go the C and the A. So then what you do is you start to, and I'm a terrible terrible artist, (laughs) but you do. (laughs) So if I can do it, anyone can. So you start with the I. So I've got an I there. And now we're going to connect the M to it. So I'm going to add it a part of this letter. So there we go. I put the M there. I took the center bar of the I and I put an M in there. So then creating, you can put creating, you can put the C even though there aren't any curves there. And I'm going to show you, I've, I've, even though this is backwards, I am drawn to put the C there. So that's actually backwards. And now I'm going to add the A. And so it actually kind of looks, it reminds me of triple goddess. And mm-hmm. again, it I'm a terrible, does, yeah, in yeah. power to you. Mm-hmm. So that's one way you could do it, or you can do them all on top of one another. Um, uh, I'm not great at it again, but, and then you can put an I there and then you can put the C. So there, uh, this isn't as clear, but you see how I've kind of put them all on top of one another. And that's the more traditional way because it's more compacted. Mm-hmm. But I, I was just kind of like, I liked the way that triple mm-hmm. thing went. So you just, and you can do it neater. You can do it with some beautiful markers and pencil pens and stuff, color it how you like. And then, you know, have that available in all of the other ways that we're talking about. So that's a way that could, because as you, and then you activate and it's almost like you can still use the phrase, but you can kind of lose the words because now it's going deep into Mm -hmm. the subconscious and the energy starts to obey it. So that's what a sigil is. But again, you can look up, if you look up sigils online or something, first of all, all of these practices have been used for dark. So make sure you resource somewhere where it's, it's, it's light and it's uplifting because, um, you know, some darker occult practices used sigils in, in ways that might be seem creepy. Uh, my friend, um, uh, Damien Eccles, he's an artist and he uses sigils and draws sigils. So go check out his website. He's got sigils all over it. And they're not necessarily with letters. They're with um, symbols and it's just really, it can be really cool artwork. So if you're an artist, ooh, this would be a powerful way to use symbols because it's really, it's drawing in your intuitive abilities as well because your creativity, your artistry is an intuitive ability. So yeah, really fun. And then who knows, then you can get that pressed onto a medallion. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, One way I also wanted to share that I use symbols is as shortcuts. Mm -hmm. For example, when I used to have uh, clients and I would do one-on-one readings or mentorship, I would have a I would have a whole process that I would go through in order to get into attunement so that I could be in front of that client and serve them at the highest level and that would include meditation that would include some sigil work that would include of uh, toning and frequency and like all kinds of things so what I did over time was I actually created a symbol that encased and embodied the entire process of that and that process could take me up to 30 minutes to run through all of the different things. Whereas if I use the symbol, I would just bring to mind that symbol right before I met with a client, maybe one or two minutes, I would spend some time intentionally activating it, trusting that it was doing exactly what it needed to do to connect me to all the guides for that client, to connect me to the heart of the clients, to make sure that I was articulate and expressive, to make sure the guides were present, like everything was as it should be. So, and I just trusted that and felt the truth of that as I activated that symbol. And then by the time I got on the call or I got in front of that client, everything was where it needed to be. And so I saved myself a lot of time, of course, to create that symbol you work with it, you you put your intention into it. You are very, you should be specific about what you want that symbol to do, what it's encompassing, what it is embodying. But once you've got the symbol in place, it's it can be a great shortcut and and really cut down the time of various processes that you might be using or employing. So mm-hmm. yeah, and and along similarly along those lines, you can 
bring symbols into an energy field, whether your own or if you are an intuitive or an energy healer, mm -hmm. you can place symbols into yep. someone's energy field, whether it's the field as it is inside their body or outside of their, you know, the, the field, the aura and the field that is outside of it. And you put it in, you can place it into there to activate whatever the well-being intention is just like with the limiting belief. So, I mean, maybe you could take the the symbol as I was talking about the limiting belief. And if you kind of feel like, well, that limiting belief is right here, or maybe it's inside my head, or maybe it's in my heart. You can put the symbol, imagine it, visualize it, sense it going to that place. And then it, now it's just like vibrating the well-being. It's vibrating the healing of that and amplifying it, signaling to the universe too, hey, come cooperate with this. Come show, come support it and come co-create so that it is, uh, so it is and it is manifest. Woo, it's so cool. There's so much we can do. <laughs> it's so much. Oh, and don't forget to slap a symbol on all your brain states. Slap yes. a symbol on alpha, <laughs> slap a mm. symbol on theta, delta, whenever you encounter it, because it'll help you to get to that brain state. A, a slap a symbol on gamma, you mm. know, when we're in, it's gamma, right? When we're, yeah. we are feeling, um, it's that peak experience and mm -hmm. um, everything is working in our way. We feel like we're in the zone. That's like, that's kind of a rare experience for me to be in gamma, but once I am in gamma, anytime in, I'm in gamma, I've got, a, I've got a symbol there to help me to connect to it the next time I'd like to be in the zone or in that yeah. creative space, yeah. You can, you can put a symbol on, you create one for if you have insomnia, I'm talking to someone. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Why haven't I done that yet? <laughs> <laughs> because we love to learn our lessons right. the way we love to learn our lessons. <laughs> it's the same reason why when I get a tummy ache, I forget to drink ginger tea. <laughs> right. Know? But anyway, yeah, you could do it for, if you, for not just insomnia, but to program your sleep a certain way so that you are interacting with your guides. And of mm. course, the symbol for sleeping is always while having deep and less restful sleep, because we all, we don't want to be having a dance party so much so that we don't right. sleep because the sleep is good for the body, brain, and spirit. Anyway, you could put a symbol on that. You could put a symbol on, oh, there's something else I was just thinking of. Well, oh, let's say if you are working with having out-of-body experiences, astral travel, mm -hmm. you could put a symbol on, just like Crystal is saying, the state where you're able to begin to experience that. And, you know, since something like OBE and astral travel is kind of like, ooh, it's a big thing. It can be overwhelming. Program it in there that you, it will be really, um, you know, sustainable and comfortable and just uplifting and inspiring whatever you're doing. Oh, see, that's something I haven't done. I'm teaching myself I have, something. Yeah. That well, good. yeah. And you can put a symbol on each dimension. Like yes. if you want to have a six dimensional experience up there with all mm -hmm. the sacred geometry, have a symbol that anchors to that, that mm -hmm. uh, dimension, connect to it and boom, you're traveling. And that symbol then when, for these experiences we're talking about, and also in general, it becomes a portal, becomes like mm -hmm. a stargate then. Mm -hmm that you, that because the Stargate is always available to you. So you are giving yourself an interface to allow yourself to move to it and that, and it actually becomes, it becomes a part of that, that portal for you. There's so much. There's so much, it. but like, let's, let's make sure everybody understands that symbol systems start off simply. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you can create a symbol for anything and you can create this in the imagination and you can activate it by just focusing on it, sending your essence and your intention into the symbol. And don't forget, spirit loves to use symbols when they interact with us. So maybe if you're meditating and you see a symbol sort of come into the mind's eye, that could represent a guide, that could represent an energy that's entering into the life. Anytime I see a symbol in meditation, I always stop, hammer time, and mm -hmm. I interact with a symbol, and I unpack mm -hmm. it, because a lot of times the symbol is embodying an entire body of work that I'm entering into, or an understanding that I'm just now beginning to achieve. So I always interact with symbols, and so spirit uses these quite a lot, but it's it's easy. It's simple. Like sometimes when we get into systems of symbols and, and angel symbols and, and all of this, it can feel like, oh, this is so sophisticated and it's not accessible to the normal person. Nope. You can create them yourself. You can have a really simple symbol for money. If you want more money, just have a dollar sign. 
dollar, mm-hmm. dollar bills, y'all. And just imagine that, give it a color, give it a frequency. And when you're creating that symbol, you're feeling prosperous. You're feeling abundant. You've got all the money in the bank account. You're not worrying about a thing. You're feeling, you're, you're feeling very free in that prosperity. And boom, now we're creating the symbol. Now we're filling it with our intention. Now we are anchoring it to prosperity. And you can work with that symbol for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You can call in that energy for the rest of your life. You know what it is too. It's a, it, a lot of people have heard of, or maybe even done vision boards. That's yeah. what vision boards Perfect. are. They're using symbols. Now, sometimes people, they don't know how, how the vision board is supposed to work because you put up a picture of a mansion. Every time you look at it, you're like, well, I live in a dump. I don't right. live there. It reminds you of be- what you don't have. Right. <laughs> yeah. But that's because you haven't done the activating part that right. we're talking about. You have to see that mansion, love that mansion and activate it with all of that good feeling. And then, you know, so many stories of people using vision boards or some kind of, you know, visual picture about something they want to manifest. And then five years later, they're like, wait a second. I think this home I just bought is the picture that I had five years ago. Right. And they maybe have long since actually been, you know, or or they, you know, like I remember someone who was an, an author who wanted to become an author, and she put the this um, the name of a publishing company like around her vanity mirror, and and years later. It, she, you know, forgotten, you know, it was long since she had that up. Then she, they reached out and signed her. You know what I mean? Like that, that specific mm-hmm. publishing company, that's the use of symbols, symbols as well. Symbols work. Symbols they are work. powerful and they yeah. work. And even affirmations are mm-hmm. sound symbols. Mm-hmm. They're patterns of energy yes. arranged in a specific magical way. And the more you interact with them and the more you match your frequency and your vibration or your feeling to the affirmation, the more likely you are to create it. They're, they're yes. symbols themselves. So symbols are everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they really just connect us or, or give us a doorway into a frequency and experience a new reality. And so if you're spiritual and if you're interested in exploring like we are, you ought to be using symbols and talisman. Get mm-hmm. your crystal out and imbue your crystal with your energy. That There you go. Now, does that crystal represent a certain energy to you? Does it connect you to something connects me to you. For those of you (laughs) listening, I'm showing the crystal that I'm wearing right now that I got from Crystal. It was actually at the Bliss Retreat 2019. Yeah, it was the second one. And it's a beautiful aura crystal that is a a pink color. It has copper infused into it as well. And Crystal um, Mm -hmm. blessed this, prayed over it, talked to it for weeks or months Mm -hmm. before she brought them to the Bliss Retreat. Mm -hmm. She also wrote out all that she channeled, co-channeled with the crystal on a beautiful card. There was a number that went along with it. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I took that activation that you infused into it and then and it continues to grow with me and I love it. I have this one and also a green one, both from the, the green one was from the previous year, from the um, 2018. And, you know, it called to me. It, mm-hmm. And I, here's the mm-hmm. thing, like there was a table of the of all these crystals that Crystal had, you know, blessed, loved, prayed, sung to and everything. And everybody like just <laughs> rushed to the table. Right. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was like a swarm. And I was like, that's okay. I'm going to, cause my first reaction was I wanted to get in there and like, I'll move out the way, bitch, move. Right. move. And I was like, that's not the right energy. Not, no, it is not. <laughs> so it was just for a split second. But I was like, that's okay. Release that. I'm just going to see. But I had eyed it. And wouldn't you know that everyone had cleared out, there were like three left and here was my baby just winking at me. See, I waited for you. (laughs) Perfect. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to get those crystals together for a bliss retreat next year. We're going to have, we're not doing another bliss retreat this year because pandemic blues and stuff, but next Mm -hmm. year, 2022, we are going to do it. And, but I have to be able to source the right crystals. My my resource for that, I don't have it anymore, but it was, it was a lot of fun, but absolutely each crystal symbolized a lot of different things like the number that it had attached to it, the the qualities, the mm-hmm. the message, all of these are symbols and you wear yeah. it and it creates that hologram around you. And now you're walking in the energy of that. Powerful. And I just want to say one last thing as we wrap this up, that as you have these dynamic moments of selecting it, activating it, and you know, giving it all, whether it's just in the mind or if it's a sigil or if it's a talisman, the 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 what you want to do is you have these big moments with it in your meditation, but you want to use it 
during the day, as you're walking about, think of the symbol while you're at work. Think of the symbol. If you notice a thought that is contrary to it, think of it. And every time it activates Mm -hmm. and it's bringing, it's, it's reprogramming the energy in alignment with that intention. So that's one thing too. It goes, we do that in, in hypnotherapy. We call them anchors. We have the, at the end of the session, you receive an anchor. And then sometimes we'll even put, by the way, this is something else you can do. If you have a mind picture of the, of the, you can also add a physical anchor to it, like pinching together your two mm-hmm. fingers. Yeah. You know, some people put a rubber band on there to snap it. And so you think of the symbol and you do a physical anchor. It's a kind of way to create a physical talisman, but just with your body. So... Yeah, we could go, probably go on. We could long. go along. Yeah, well, I had a whole course on this. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. Really, really <laughs> comprehensive course on symbols, but they work. They're powerful. You can create them yourself. So, yeah, get yeah. into it. Get into the symbols. Get into it. Just start with triangles, circles, whatever shows up totally. for you. Like Crystal said, make yeah. it simple and have fun. Always important to have fun. Yes. Well, this has been a really fun and ep- episode with you, Crystal. Really great. I enjoyed it. Yeah, me and too. Got a lot of inspiration. And if you would like to reach out to us, if you would like to ask us a question, if you would like to suggest an episode or share your experience in spirit or the paranormal even, we welcome you to write us at podcast at lightshinespiritualacademy.com. You can also find that in the description or show notes, however you're listening or watching. We do read all of them. And then, you know, if it seems a fit, then we will talk about it. We will include whatever you identify. You say, uh, it's Stacy. We'll just say Stacy. If you don't <laughs> sign it, we won't say anything. <laughs> but sometimes people like to actually hear their name on the. So uh, whatever you want to share, we would love to hear from you. And you know, do subscribe, like, share, comment. Please leave us a review on Apple iTunes or however you get your podcasts. If you watch this on YouTube, click that little bell so you can get the notifications when new episodes come on. And with that, we love you and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye guys. Bye.